All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up some sour diesel. You know what I say? Sunshine for the soul. Of course, we gotta thank Luigi Mealy from LTC Nutrition and Performance for sponsoring today's video. Health is wealth. Let him set you straight. A lot of shit going on on these YouTube streets with this Gotti Borello situation. A lot of disgraciad behavior, but you know how I conduct myself on mob stories. I keep it strictly business and I keep it moving. And that's how one should always conduct business. This next article coming out of the way of the gangster report by my man Scott Bernstein. Salute to you, sir. When and where did former mob don... Cadillac Frank Salemi get made. With Boston crime reporter extraordinaire Howie Carr releasing FBI documents at his disposal a few years ago, the question of exactly how one time New England Mafia boss Frank Cadillac Salemi received his button and official induction into the Patriarca crime family came into play. The swashbuckling, revenge thirsty Cadillac Frank Salemi led the mob in New England during the early to mid 1990s, leaving a litany of bodies in his wake. He was in the witness protection program for a decade and a half before being charged and then found guilty in the May 1993 gangland slaying of his former business partner, Boston nightclub owner Stevie DeSaro. In 2019, the 88 year old Salemi was sentenced to life in federal prison. He had not been a Don for more than two decades, and some things about his rise and his reign in the Patriarca clan remain a mystery such as were and when he was made into La Cosa Nostra. FBI informant Stevie the Rifleman Flemmy, a disgraciad, a powerful and dangerous underworld figure in Boston from the 1970s until his arrest in 1995, told the government that Salemi was made into the mafia at a ceremony in Boston's North End in 1980 during a weekend furlough from state prison. Upon Salemi flipping to become a witness for the government, he told authorities as well as a U.S. congressional committee that he joined the Patriarca crime family in July of 1987 in a ceremony in Providence four months following his release from prison on attempted murder conviction tied to a 1968 car bombing attack aimed at intimidating a dirty lawyer suspected to be considering cooperating with the FBI. The attorney had his leg blown off in the attack and Salemi spent the next four years on the run from the law hiding out in New York, Montreal, Florida, Chicago, and California. Cadillac Frank was a natural mafia politician and made an allegiance with Flemmy and his partner, South Boston's iconic Irish mob chief, James Whitey Bulger, and their Winter Hill gang when he took power in the Patriarca crime family in the face of intense resistance from the family's North End and East Boston factions. So let me survive a June 1989 assassination attempt at Saugus, Massachusetts International House of Pancakes. Flemmy testified against Cadillac Frank at his trial for the Stevie the Sorrow murder, telling jurors he accidentally walked in on Salemi, his son, his brother, and another mob associate in the process of killing the Sorrow by strangulation inside Salemi's kitchen at his suburban Boston residence. Salemi was indicted alongside Bulger and Flemmy in January of 1995 in a giant federal racketeering case. After he learned that Bulger and Flemmy had been feeding the government information on him since the 1970s, Cadillac Frank turned his back on the mob, disgraciad, and entered the witness protection program. In their younger days, Salemi and Flemmy were partners in crime and mentioned by Boston mob capo Larry Zanino. According to Flemmy's assertion regarding Cadillac Frank's making ritual, Zanino and then New England Mafia underboss and then New England Mafia underboss Jerry Angelo performed the ceremony in the North End's doghouse mob headquarters on Prince Street. Per Salemi's own account, Raymond Ray Rubberlips Patriarca Jr. and Nicky Bianco made him in a ceremony that took place in Rhode Island in the summer of 1987. Bianco getting sent to prison resulted in Salemi being given the okay from the five families in New York to assume the throne in New England. Bianco was known for his mediation skills and connections to other crime families around the country. Before being locked up for the car bombing he orchestrated, Salemi was a go-to hitman for the New England Mafia's most legendary figure and crime family namesake, Raymond Patriarca. But word on the street was that the elder Patriarca deferred from 
inducting Cadillac Frank into his organization due to him being half Irish. Both Bianco and the Patriarchas represented the Providence wing of the crime family. Patriarca died of a sudden heart attack in 1984, passing the reins to his son Ray Jr. and laying the groundwork for the instability that came when Cadillac Frank Salemi walked free from state prison less than three years later. Patriarca Jr. was forced from power in 1989 by the North End and Easty Boston factions that opposed Salemi's ascent. During Salemi's reign atop the New England underworld, he took aim at those who had attempted to thwart his rise to Godfather and, according to sources, ordered the murders of at least half a dozen of them, all of which he neglected to inform the FBI in his cooperation agreement. So first of all, salute to Scott Bernstein for the article, another blast from the past about Cadillac Frank and when and where he got made and got his button. Of course, we got to thank LTC Nutrition and Performance, Luigi Mealy, DM or email to join and get your health in order. He'll set you straight. Mob Story Season 3. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I want to thank everybody for supporting us. Let me know what you're smoking on. Let me know what city you're smoking in. Like I said, I'm puffing on some sour diesel. Big Rich, Queens, NYC. You know how we conduct ourselves. Business.